This is another uh, Explorations podcast uh, with uh, Richard Fontenay. And uh, today's topic is effective ways to manage stress during your renewal journey. Now, self-renewal is hard work and could create stress for you. Finding ways to reduce the stress that may crop up during your renewal journey is vitally important for maintaining your overall balance in mind, body, and spirit. Now, before we go any further, would you mind kindly subscribing uh, to this channel for more uh, podcasts and uh, videos and shorts? Thank you in advance for that. Now let's talk about how you can manage stress uh, during your renewal journey by exploring six effective ways to reduce your stress today. The first way is to practice deep breathing. Now deep breathing exercises, also known as diaphragmatic breathing or belly breathing, can help to reduce stress and anxiety by slowing down your heart rate and calming your nervous system. Now, this type of breathing involves inhaling deeply into your diaphragm rather than shallowly breathing into your chest. Here's a simple deep breathing exercise you can try. Sit or lie down in a comfortable position and place one hand on your chest and the other on your belly. Inhale slowly through your nose, allowing your belly to rise as you fill your lungs with air. Exhale slowly through your mouth, allowing your belly to fall or to fill as you empty your lungs uh, of air. Repeat this deep breathing pattern for several minutes, focusing on the rise and the fall of your belly as you inhale and exhale. You can also try counting to four while inhaling and eight while exhaling to increase the duration of the breath and make it more effective. Deep breathing exercises can be done at any time and can be particularly helpful during moments of stress and anxiety. Incorporating deep breathing exercises into your daily routine can also help to reduce overall stress levels and improve your well-being. Number two, exercise regularly. Regular exercise can release endorphins, also known as the feel-good hormones, which can improve your mood and reduce stress. Uh, When you exercise your body, it also produces other chemicals, such as neophrenophine and cortisol, which can help to reduce stress and anxiety. Additionally, Exercise can improve sleep, increase your self-esteem, and provide a sense of accomplishment and, and control. It is recommended to get at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise most days of the week, such as brisk walking, cycling, or swimming. However, even small amounts of physical activity can be beneficial. There are different types of exercises you can choose from. For instance, there's aerobic exercises such as running, swimming, and cycling. These help to increase heart rate and improve cardiovascular fitness. Then there's strength training, such as weightlifting or using resistance bands that can help to build muscle and increase bone density. And there's stretching and flexibility exercises, such as yoga or tai chi, and they can help to improve flexibility and reduce muscle tension. 
Now, this type of exercise is especially good if you are elderly. It is important to find an activity that you can enjoy that fits into your lifestyle. Uh, remember that consistency is key, and making exercise a regular part of your routine can help to reduce stress and improve your overall well-being. Number three, prioritize and plan tasks. Now, prioritizing and planning tasks can help to reduce stress by allowing you to focus on what is most important and avoid feeling overwhelmed. Now, when you have a lot to do, it can be easy to feel like you're co constantly running behind, which can lead to increased uh, stress levels. Here are a few tips for prioritizing and planning your tasks. Make a list of everything that needs to be done and prioritize the items based on their level of importance and urgency. Break larger tasks into smaller ones, into more manageable steps, and set specific deadline for each step. Each step. Use a calendar or a planner to schedule your tasks and set reminders to, to keep yourself on track. Be realistic about how much you can accomplish in a day and avoid overloading yourself with too much to do. And delegate tasks to others if possible and learn to say no when you're already overburdened. Make time for breaks throughout the day to recharge and to avoid burnout. Now remember that perfectionism can be a source of stress, and that's okay to make mistakes, of course, or not be able to complete everything on your list. Um, prioritizing and planning tasks can help you to feel more in control of your time, and reduce stress. Number four, set boundaries. Now, setting boundaries with your time and energy is an important aspect of managing stress. It means being mindful of what you can and cannot take on being able to say no when you need to. This can help protect you from becoming overworked or overextended and can help you to prioritize your own well-being. Here are a few tips about setting boundaries. Identify what is most important to you and make sure that you are spending your time and energy on those things. Learn to say no to requests or invitations that do not align with your priorities and your values. Set clear limits on the amount of time and energy you are willing to spend or work on other obligations. Learn to recognize when you are becoming overwhelmed and take steps to reduce your stress levels. Communicate your boundaries clearly to others and be willing to assert yourself when necessary. Make time for yourself and engage in activities that you enjoy, such as hobbies or spending time with loved ones. And make sure to establish boundaries in different aspects of your life, like work and family, friends, and, and your personal time. Remember that setting boundaries is not selfish, and it is important to take care of yourself in order to be able to take care of others. By setting boundaries, you are taking a proactive step towards managing stress and improving your overall well-being. Number five, practice mindfulness. Practicing mindfulness and meditation can be a real effective way to reduce stress. Mindfulness is the practice of being present in the moment and paying attention to your thoughts and emotions without judgment. 
Meditation is a technique that can help you achieve mindfulness by focusing your attention on a specific object or a thought or an activity. Now, there are many different types of meditation, including guided meditation, and this involves listening to a recorded meditation or following along with a guided meditation application. There's body scan meditation. And this involves lying down and focusing on each part of your body, starting at your toes and working your way up to the top of your head. There's mindfulness-based stress reduction as well. And this is a program that combines mindfulness and meditation techniques to help reduce stress and improve overall well-being. By practicing mindfulness and meditation regularly, you can improve your ability to manage stress and stay calm in difficult situations. But take note that it's always a good idea to consult with a professional, such as your doctor, before starting a new meditation practice to make sure it's safe for you. Number six. Learn to say no. Saying no can be difficult, especially when we are under stress. Stress can cause us to feel pressure to please others and avoid conflict, which can make it harder to assert ourselves and set boundaries. But learning to say no in a respectful way can help reduce stress by allowing us to maintain control over our time and energy and avoid taking on more than we can handle. When you are under stress, you may be more likely to feel guilty or apologetic when declining a request. However, it's important to remember that you have the right to make your own choices about how you spend your time and energy, and it's okay to prioritize your own well-being. One way to practice saying no in a respectful way is to use I statements, which express your own feelings and needs rather than placing blame on the other person. For example, instead of saying, you're always asking me to do things, you could say, I'm feeling overwhelmed right now and need to focus on my own responsibilities. Another way to say no is to offer an alternative solution or to suggest a compromise. For example, instead of saying, I can't go to the meeting, you could say, I can't go to the meeting, but I can send you my notes and you can share the outcome with me afterward. It's also important to remember that saying no is not a final answer. It's a negotiation. So, being open to finding a solution that works for both parties is important. Now, let me explain further. No is often used to indicate that a request or proposal has been denied or rejected. However, we have found that this is not necessarily the case. In many situations, no is not the final answer in a negotiation or a discussion. Instead, it is often used as a starting point for further discussion and negotiation. It can be used as a counterproposal or can be seen as an opportunity to open a dialogue and find common ground rather than an end to a conversation. Briefly, Learning to say no respectfully can help reduce stress by allowing us to maintain control over our time and energy and avoid taking on more than we can handle. And when you are under stress, try to practice using I statements, offering alternative solutions and finding a compromise. Now, I hope these six suggestions on how to reduce stress when you are in the process of renewing yourself are helpful to you. Here are the six ways again. One, 
practice deep breathing. Two, exercise regularly. Three, prioritize and plan tasks. Four, set boundaries. Five, practice mindfulness and meditation. And six, learn to say no. As always, folks, stay safe, keep well, and continue becoming the best that you can be. Oh, and remember to subscribe to our channel. Bye for now. Talk to you again next week.